Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you to Trinity Lutheran Church. We're located at 530 Northwest 4th Street in Faribault, Minnesota. This morning's service is the tra we're celebrating the transfiguration of our Lord. And our pastor, um, Kurt Lemkiel, will be speaking on the transfiguration based off of Matthew 17, 1 through 9. This morning we'll be using Desi Divine Service 1 out of the Lutheran Service Book. Our hymns this morning will be number 414, Tis Good Lord to Be Here, number 416, Swiftly Past the Clouds of Glory, number 537, Beautiful Savior, number 636, Soul, Adorn Yourself with Gladness, and number 417, Alleluia, Song of Gladness. The Trinity Choir will be performing during our service this morning, and Kevin Krieger is our organist. And as I said, our uh, speaker and uh, pastor leading the service this morning is our pastor, Kurt Lemkiel. We ask you to join us as we open our service with hymn number 414 in the Lutheran Service Book, Tis Good Lord to Be Here. That will be coming up just as soon as the congregation finishes greeting one another for the morning. Shine, Jesus, shine. Good morning. Do I join on the, in on the chorus? We do? Yeah, that'll be fun. We've done that before. It's a good day for it, too. Shine, sunshine, shine, Jesus. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. I invite you to be seated then for our first hymn, Tis Good Lord to Be Here, hymn 414. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you and each other by what we think, what we say, and what we do and do not do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We deserve only punishment for our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life that we would live, look upon us with mercy and forgive us our sins. Change us and make us new. Amen. People of God, I have good news for you. God has heard your pleas for mercy and given you his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and to rise to bring you life. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of my Lord Jesus Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. <coughs> Help, save Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy. Together let us pray. Eternal God, you revealed to the disciples the everlasting glory of Jesus Christ. 
Grant to us who have not seen and yet believe the gift of your Holy Spirit that we may boldly live the gospel and shine with your transforming glory as people who are changed and changing through the redeeming grace and mercy of our Savior. It is in his name we, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The first lesson for Transfiguration Sunday is written in Exodus chapter 24, beginning at the 8th verse. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nabab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. And the Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt on the Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Second Peter chapter 1, beginning at the 16th verse. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, for we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have something more sure, the prophetic word, to which you will do well to pay attention, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the verse. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew from the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John his brother and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, 
And a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, except kids. It's your turn. May I come up? Yeah, there are a couple. Here we go. One? You're pretty special. Oh, here comes another one. Okay. We got two. Are you going to come over here? Okay, I'll, I'm going to sit down. You can just kind of gather around here. Okay. Who can tell me what season it is? Yeah. Winter? Is it winter? When does winter start? On the 21st of December? And then sometimes we can't tell by the snow. Sometimes we have snow in the spring, right? <laughs> but according to the calendar. Now, there's also another calendar, kind of. It's the church calendar. Do you know what season it is in the church? What are some of the seasons of the church? You have the Advent season. Yeah, what else? Lent. We're going to come into Lent in a couple of days. And we have after Christmas well, Christmas is a season too, right? And then after Christmas is one that we don't talk about much. It's called Epiphany, huh? Yeah, we're in the Epiphany season now. And <clears throat> Transfiguration Sunday is like a little bridge between Epiphany and Lent. Because on Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, the start of Lent. That's why we're having a lot of fun with our hallelujahs today because in Lent we don't sing hallelujahs, do we? Because that's more of a happy sound. And in Lent we think of more, well, unhappy things like focusing on sin and forgiveness and that kind of thing. And so we're a little bit more, uh, I guess, unhappy than the times when we sing hallelujah, like Easter season and Christmas season, that kind of thing. But <clears throat> there's something about um, the Epiphany season, which is right before this, which we know about, but we don't really connect it maybe sometimes. And that is the Star of the East. Right? The star <clears throat> was what the wise men, you've heard of the wise men, right? Yeah, they came to see baby Jesus. They came to Jerusalem and said, where is this person? Because we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him, right? And I don't know. But the star guided them. And so we have, and here we have a little star. And we wonder, do you have stars in your life too to guide you? Maybe it would be who? Jesus, yeah, in the readings we had to Jesus and your parents and sometimes your teachers and sometimes your friends, they can tell you about Jesus. I remember my little son when he was about four years old, <clears throat> he was talking to one of his buddies and they were talking about Jesus and my son said, yeah, Jesus was pretty special because he died but he came to life again. I thought, that's kind of neat. Four years old and I already had that idea. So here's... Here is the star and, um, that was leading people to Jesus. But you know what? You can be a star too. How about that? Yeah, you can be a star and lead people to Jesus. And so when we think of the Epiphany season, which is ending now, Transfiguration is kind of the bridge between Epiphany and Lent. Think of the fact that that is a time when people were led to Jesus and in this Transfiguration Sunday, Jesus led 
his disciples up the mountain and they saw a special vision of Jesus and he almost like he glowed in the dark kind of thing, you know, to show that brightness of God in him which made us think, hey, it's not just another person. It's God in the person of Jesus. So that's what they were learning as they were led up the mountain. So we think of uh, being led to Jesus. People have led us to Jesus and now we have the privilege of leading other people to Jesus. And so all of us can enjoy being with God forever. Shall we pray? God our Father, we thank you for sending Jesus among us to lead us closer to you. And now we ask you to be with us with your Holy Spirit so that we can be enabled to be the ones who lead other people to Jesus and finally to God in heaven. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we have some goodies, of course, right? They're, they're over here. Do you want to get them? Just uh, grab one for each of them. They'll be all set. Join us now as we sing the hymn of the day, Swiftly Pass the Clouds of Glory. That's Lutheran Service Book number 416, Swiftly Pass the Clouds of Glory. With the purest light that sh Grace you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for the meditation is the gospel lesson, especially the words, He was transfigured before them. There's enough in there for the whole sermon. That's really a strange thing when you stop and think about it. Our minds want more. Our minds want to be able to grasp it and understand it, somehow contain it. But somehow it just doesn't happen. That's what happens many times when we encounter God. We want to know more, but God just gives us what we need. I think of the time when Jesus was talking about the end of the world, and his disciples said to him, Tell us. When will this happen and what will be the signs of the close of the age, right? People always want to know, when's it going to happen? This end of the world business. 
One person said, well, yeah, if I knew, I would really just uh, do all kinds of wild stuff until I knew the day was coming, then I'd shape up, and then I'd be ready for the last day. But for whatever reason, we do want to know, and for whatever reason, God just doesn't give that to us. He gives us what we want to know only to the extent that it's beneficial to us in our faith. And there are, there are three things, really, in this transfiguration that are useful and that are plain. The first one is uh, identification. Jesus is identified not just as a human, but as God as well. And the second thing is that he has authority. And so I'll talk about authority a little bit, too. And finally, the third thing is mission. The mission, his purpose and the purpose that we share. So first of all, <clears throat> identification. I mean, these folks heard about Jesus, and they were called as his disciples, and they knew him as a regular person, a person who ate and drank and got tired and went to bed and slept and was refreshed and all that other thing. The son, as it was thought, of Mary and Joseph from Nazareth. And that was it. I mean, this experience on what people think was Mount Tabor was something which said, he's more than that. He's more than that. Because he glowed like the sun. His appearance was altered. And what did the disciples make of it? Well, there is a very strong correlation between brightness and light and God. Remember that first reading when Moses went up the mountain and said the top of the mountain was like an unquenchable fire, like some of those things we've seen on TV lately, some of those tremendously hot and unstoppable fires. That was the appearance, and the presence of God was there. And also when he was leading his people through the desert, a bright cloud by day, right, and fire by night. And so you've got this repeated association of God and light, especially bright light, light which is beyond what we would normally think about. And so when Jesus participates in this, they are aware that what they're seeing in this vision is Jesus as God. In the reading for the epistle, we heard, For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Jesus was there before them. This was for real. Jesus was a man, but he was also God. That's what the brightness was all about. His identification as God. Second thing is authority. This is kind of interesting because there's another place where this phrase, this is my beloved son, comes out. Remember that? That is baptism, right? It says, this is my beloved son with whom I'm well pleased. But there is one phrase missing at the baptism, and that phrase is included here. Listen to him. It's almost as if at his baptism he was recognized as son of God, but now he had been through a time when he healed people, he did miracles, he was a wise teacher, he did all these things, and now, in a sense, he had proved himself, right? So the voice says, this is my beloved son, with whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. There is authority there. It's something that shows that he is someone that we can really count on to tell us the truth. My wife's a music teacher, <clears throat> and uh, at one point in a third grade class, she was telling the kids about uh, the people singing in the fields, and they would be singing so that they could uh, not worry about the work they were doing so much, but, but they would just be think thinking about the singing and enjoying themselves a little bit as they did their work. And so the kids kind of sat there and they nodded a little bit. But my wife, about a week later, she somehow knew this big black guy. And he came in 
and he told the kids, kids, I want to tell you about the people in the field, you know. <laughs> and, uh, he told them about the same story. And then my wife got some feedback. One of the parents came and <clears throat> said, her child had come and said, you know what Mrs. Lemko said about the people singing in the fields? That was really true. <laughs> Somebody with authority had told them. Now they could believe. And so Jesus is the one with authority to tell us something about God. Interesting that Moses and Elijah appear. Now, <clears throat> Elijah, remember how Elijah left the earth? Did he die? If you think about your Sunday school, I can still remember the little folder that had Elijah in the fiery chariot, right? He was moving on up. And interesting that one of the people I was reading to prepare for this today talked about Elijah and the fiery chariot. And I said, I don't know about that. Somebody said, you know, if you want to make an easy five bucks, ask somebody how Elijah left the earth, and they will tell you in the fiery chariot. He said, not so fast. In Second Kings chapter 2, verse 11, it tells about how it really happened. The fiery chariot came between Elijah and Elisha, and it says Elijah was taken up in a whirlwind. <laughs> how about that? Not what we always thought. But in any case, he did not die a natural death. And he appeared with Jesus on the mountain. Isn't that interesting? The other person was Moses. And Moses didn't die among his people as leaders normally would. And they would have the period of mourning. Well, they had the mourning. But uh, it says God took him into the mountains. And he died there. And God buried him. And the structure of that whole thing is a little bit iffy as if to say, well, maybe God just took him out of this kind of life and took him into life with him. It's a little bit fuzzy, you know. He didn't die among the people, but God took care of that. And he's the other one that appears on the mountain with Jesus. In any case, he has the authority, the authority to speak. And uh, authority in the Bible is a derived concept. In other words, God alone has authority, but then he passes that authority down to others, and with that authority, they carry out his will. We say in our worship service, the pastor says, by his authority, I forgive you all your sins, right? I think it's the 20th chapter of John where Jesus says after his resurrection, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, what? They are forgiven. That's passing on of authority, that very important thing of forgiving sins because there's nothing wrong with being human, but there is something wrong with sin. Sin separates us from God, and we kind of know that deep down. And so in the Bible, we find people Recognizing the presence of God, you also find them fearful. One example is when they had the big catch of fishes and Peter realized that this Jesus was sinless and he backed off and he said, depart from me for I am a sinful man, right? And there are other examples of that. Anytime that the people feel that they're in the presence of God, they have fear. And even here on the mountain, remember? He said they lifted up their eyes after they were fearful, and, they, and Jesus said, do not fear. So they also were fearful. But the authority of Jesus takes care of fear because it takes care of sin. He wipes that out, and we are fit for the presence of God because of what he has done. Then the third thing is mission. It says in another place that Elijah and Moses were speaking to Jesus of his journey to Jerusalem, right? And we know what was going to happen there. He was going to be captured and tortured 
and nailed to a cross. And this was perhaps a very difficult thing for him as human being. Some have speculated that maybe Moses and Elijah were there just to encourage him to go through this terrible thing that he was about to do. It doesn't say that anywhere in the Bible. We're just kind of thinking that maybe that was why. But in any case, they were there and they spoke with Jesus about his coming to Jerusalem. And then, on the way down the mountain, Jesus says to them, don't tell anybody about the vision until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead, okay? So in spite of all the other things that he had to think about, he was still focused on that final great action of God, his resurrection. And so he gave them the mission that he had. He came to live and die and rise again, to invite people into the presence of God forever. And then, with the authority business again, Matthew 28, you remember that one. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, Jesus says. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And so we share that mission that Jesus had as well. And so here we go. <clears throat> we have the church year, which is Advent, and then Christmas, and then Epiphany, and then we have the little uh, bridge in there, Transfiguration Sunday, right? And then we have Lent, and then the, I guess they call it the time of the church. And then, guess what? Pretty soon, right back to Advent again. <laughs> so one of my friends called it racetrack theology, right? And going around, around, around. But during that period, and those times around the track, more and more people understand. More and more people are drawn close to God. His mission goes forward. So I'm not sure if I should uh, take the time to, maybe I'll just give you a sort of brief summary. Go back to Christmas, as long as we're in the calendar. And <clears throat> the fifth and sixth creators were going to do a little skit about the story. And so... Mary and Joseph and the innkeeper were there. And uh, little Kevin wanted to be a shepherd. But she said, oh, you're tall. You should, you should be the innkeeper. He said, well, okay. And so he was standing there, and they knocked on the door. He opened the door. And Mary's going to have a baby. We need a place to stay. And Kevin just stood there. <laughs> Didn't say anything. So they said, Mary needs a place to stay because it's really, it's really time to have a baby. By this time, Mary's giving him a little elbow saying, you're supposed to say, there's no room in the inn. Kevin just stood there. And so they said, well, this thing can't go on forever. We better get, get it going. So he turned around as if they were going to leave. And Kevin said, wait, you can stay in my room. <laughs> he changed the story. <laughs> he changed the ending. But the reason I'm mentioning is that because because Jesus is the one who changed the ending to our story, our human story. Because without him and what he did, we would be moving toward death, annihilation, nothingness. But because of what he did, we are living toward life. Tremendous new life, resurrection life, life in the presence of God forever. We have identification of Jesus, his authority, and his mission. It's for us and for us to share, to bring life. Amen. Shall we rise? Having heard God's word, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Shall we pray? Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for those among us who have special needs. Dean and Melissa, Janice, Jace, Crystal, Jennifer, Verna Ball, Diane Bartke, Jeffrey Bauer, Dean Berghoff, Todd Bursch, Laurel Inquist, Chuck Fairclaw, Gary Kittleson, Gary Miner, Jania Moore, Mark Preve, Mark Quinlan, Barb Roach, Ray Sanders, Nancy Schultz, Esther Seapolt, Kay Smith, Riven Bob and Marty Snyder, Helen Spitzak, Donald G. Steppen, Shirley Tesh, Jean Trench, and Dennis Waskowski. Oh Lord, we ask you to touch them with your power and give support <coughs> and healing according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in nursing homes. Lord, you know how lonesome people can feel sometimes when it feels that no one cares about them anymore. Let them know your power and your presence and your care for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in the military and for those who are in charge of the dealings of our country. We ask that you would be with those who govern, with those who serve in the military. Let them have your Holy Spirit and your wisdom so that your word may be freely among them and that we may be governed according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those <clears throat> who are expecting new babies and for the unborn. We ask you to Keep all in good health, that all may grow and develop and be healthy and strong so that they can become the kind of people that you have in mind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for fair bowlers in school, the staff, the students, and their family. We ask, Lord, that you would not only guide them <clears throat> in their normal studies of reading, writing, and arithmetic, but that they don't forget the spiritual aspect of their existence. Let this constantly be before them so that their faith may grow stronger and stronger and they may have a new strength in their relationship with you and a new ability to share the faith with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue with those who are part of the regular rotation for prayers in our congregation. We pray for Laverne Schultz, William Schultz, Nancy Schultz, Elmer Schultz, James Schwartz. Lord, you know that we all struggle with whatever things are in our lives that do not seem to add up. And so you ask, we ask you to guide these people, give them healing and strength where this is necessary, and guide us all into a new and stronger relationship with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we receive Holy Communion, let this be a time and we recognize more fully your presence in our lives so that we can continually live as your people in your world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. As we pray the prayer you have taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The offering will now be received.
Shall we rise and continue with the service of the sacrament? The Lord be with you. We celebrate the sacrament of the altar in the confidence that our Lord gives us his very body and blood to eat and to drink in with and under the bread and wine. We receive the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our union with God and with one another. As we trust his words and repent of our sins, we proclaim Christ's death until he comes. Holy Communion is a confession of our faith and we require that those who receive this sacrament be instructed and share in the beliefs that we hold. Hear now the words of our Lord spoken at the time of the Last Supper. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. People of God, do you believe the body and blood of Christ is present in, with, and under the bread and wine? If so, please answer, I do so believe. <clears throat> in addition, do you wish to receive the many blessings of this sacrament, the forgiveness of sins, communion with Christ, unity with one another as Christians, and the opportunity to remember our Lord's sacrifice, give him thanks for this gift and for our salvation, and proclaim our Lord's death on the cross for us. If yes, please answer with humility and thankfulness, I wish to receive these gifts of grace. With humility and thankfulness, I wish to receive these gifts of grace. Welcome to the Lord's table. <clears throat> Lamb of God, you take away Join us now for our communion distribution hymn. Our first one will be Beautiful Savior, Lutheran Service Book number 537.
Join us for our next distribution hymn, Soul, Adorn Yourself with Gladness, Lutheran Service Book number 636.
as we close off our radio service here at Trinity, we hope it has been a blessing to you. This morning's service was a direct broadcast from Katie, from Trinity Lutheran Church, located at 530 Northwest 4th Street in Faribault, Minnesota. We'd like to uh, thank the following for their gifts. In memory of Siegfried Mittman, we received gifts from Tom and Barb Beatty, Don Burkhartsmeyer, Vern Cross, Scott and Jill Finstoon, Kurt and Leanne Fuchs, Faye Hayhurst, Patrick Justin, Dwayne and Diane Schlobum, Bill and Charlotte Scurry, Mark and Margaret Simonson, Larry Tweet, Helen Belsky, Mike and Barb Young, the State Bank of Faribault, and by family and friends. And in loving memory of Delna Spitzak, we'd like to thank Ian V. Schneider and Mary Ann Young for their gifts. You can visit us on the internet at www.trinityradioandvideo.org, where you can see our services and see our live streams. Until this coming Wednesday evening for our first um, Lenten service, our Ash Wednesday service is coming Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. We return you now to the downtown studios of KDHL. Giving, hallelujah, hallelujah. <coughs> Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you, and fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name. Please be seated. Matters of importance. My goodness, what have we got here? A scavenger hunt for grandparents and grandkids will be next Saturday, 3 p.m. at Trinity. The fun treasure hunt will be followed by ice cream with all the toppings. I'm an ice cream guy. My grandkids are in college and high school, but maybe I could sneak in there anyway. 
Number two, Peace Lutheran will host an Internet Safety for Family seminar this Sunday, 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. A light meal and child care is provided. Be sure to RSVP. Number three, Ash Wednesday is February 26th with a 5.30 service. Human Care is hosting the Soup Supper. If you can donate bars or cookies for the supper, sign up at the Information Center. Number four, the first Sunday in Lent, March 1st, we will begin the 40-day devotion Red Letter Challenge. Books are available at the Information Center or in the church office. Please take one book per family. Suggested donation to cover costs is $20, but is not required. Members of Trinity who are already uh, struggling with things and would like to pray about that, there will be people after the service waiting in the sanctuary. Please come forward if you have a situation in your life that you would like to pray about. Anything else we should share at this time? Okay. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.